Hey guys, welcome to the Mount Maker tutorial. This is up to date as of beta 0.6. So we're just going to go a quick run through of the different kinds of things you can do with the software. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So first things first, we'll start with just the camera sleeves. These are pretty simple. Uh, up on the top left here, you can switch through the different camera models that are available. Run cam two run cam orange and so on and to change the sleeve just this drop down window here thin sleeve um, there will be some with bolt access on the bottom of them some variations but uh, yeah the ones with the GoPro brackets on the bottom are fairly simple it's really all you need to do is swap through them as you go we'll move on to GoPro bases um, these are just the standard bracket you can drag for arm width front arm width and total length and I'll note that these numbers here for the front arm width rear arm width and total length those are the numbers from the center of the bolts uh, either direction so it should be fairly easy to figure that out with calipers on your uh, on your drones and then you can get your thickness and arm length Arm length works independent of the total length. So say your total length is 28.5 in this instance, the arm length actually won't change. It just changes the, uh, the size of the base, basically. It gives you more plastic to play with on the base. Now you can go through and custom enter any width that you would actually want, length, anything. These can be ridiculous numbers if, I mean, if you have a thousand millimeter long drone, well, we can work with that. But you can also get down to the decimals if you're one of those extremely specific kind of people. Down here, you have your different bolt sizes. I don't really know of anybody that uses M4 bolts on their drones or anything smaller than an M1 for mounting cameras. But I mean, if you do, let me know and I'll implement it. So it goes up to M3, changes the bolt holes. Edging. <clears throat> Edging changes the way that the base is kind of rounded. So I have two options. I have fillet and chamfer. So this will only change when you have your arm length above zero millimeters or the width is smaller than on the front or the back. So in this case, say I took the, the widths down quite a bit here and changed the arm length. You can see the chamfer kind of fills it out. It makes it a little bit smoother. And the same thing works with fillet. All right, you can also use a light base, which is what I'm calling this, or a solid base, which is, uh, well, basically an ugly square. But um, for some of those guys who freestyle a little bit too hard, this might be better at actually preventing your base from tearing. But I mean, you could also go with a 10 millimeter thick base too, and that, that mount's not going anywhere. Okay, moving on, full mounts. So taking the stuff that uh, we just talked about with the base, you can still play with that all the same. Let's change it back to something less ugly. But you'll notice it's sitting right flush with it. So let's go over to this side and talk about these items here. So we're gonna start with vertical spacing. Uh, does exactly what it looks like. You'll lift the mount or the sleeve higher or lower off the base. Now this can come in really handy once you start playing with angles. Horizontal displacement moves it backwards and forwards along the base. Spacer scale. This is uh, that middle piece there. You can choose how thick it is. If you make it as thick as possible, you won't be able to change the offset on it. But say I reduced it down to a smaller size here, I can move the actual spacer forward or back. That's independent of the actual mount moving forwards or back. <clears throat> what can be interesting about this is when you start incorporating it with spacer edging. So say we have fillet, which is actually chamfer. I'm gonna have to fix that. You can go and scale up the edging and then you can move this offset, oops. Yes, this offset back and forth changes what kind of where the center of the base is. Now, this is kind of nice because when you go in here, this is how you change your angle, by the way. 
when you go in here and say you set it at 25, you want to keep it really close to your um, your mount. You can kind of fudge that angle and play with it a little bit more detail than even just the, the default models would allow. Say we want to tip that up to 40. You can move that back and forth, get it nice and flush. Nice and flush. <laughs> All right, so that's how that works. You can also change how the top of this angle looks. So in this case, we have triangle, V split cut, which I'll get to in a minute, and triangle split. So the triangle split is meant to work in conjunction with uh, this button, split spacer. So you can actually give yourself a bit of a gap there. Move that around like that. Now let's get into V-Split. So V-Split is kind of like a cradle style. Um, it's a little bit different than the other two, as you can see here. Because the spacer scale is so small, it's also going to be really small. So in most cases, you're going to have vertical spacing at zero with a cradle like this, and you're probably going to have the spacer scale maxed out, so you won't actually get any edging. And then you can actually move the horizontal displacement kind of tuck the, the actual mount in there and that will work for any any angle go up to 50 with this if we wanted to bring it back down to 10 gets a little wonky these cradles are kind of more designed for your higher angle mounts especially ones that you want a little bit extra support for but you want to keep away from the back of the pad All right, and uh, we'll get into imports real quick. Oh, no, you know what? I'm going to talk about text first. So text is a little bit funky. Uh, best to do it on a bigger mount, not not necessarily a run cam. You could. You can do it on a run cam. But it's easier to show you if I pull up a Hero 8 here. Let's use a more appropriate mount base. There we go. Okay, so adding and editing text. Down here under sleeve options, this is available anytime there's a sleeve on the screen. You can click that, it opens up the text window. For the moment, I'm only allowing for one set of text to be entered onto a mount at a time, but it can be put anywhere. I might change this and allow for multiples uh, in the long term, but for bug fix avoidance reasons, I'm keeping it at one for now. You can change your font here. Tech, I have two fonts that I've modeled, uh, tech and script. So we'll write in tech. Just type your whatever you want. Mount, mount, mount maker. And you'll see it kind of spawns. Um, the center of it is actually the center of the mount. So you can change your X position, your Y position, and your Z position. These positions are relative to the angle that the uh, text is at. So if I change the Z rotation and move Y, it's actually going to move up and down sideways. So straighten that out. Now X rotation is what I want. Kind of give it a bit of an angle. It's a little bit finicky to play with, but it works. Z position is forwards and back. Kind of want to embed it in there a little bit. Straighten it out. And then you can also play with the scale. Make it really squished, really wide. Height. Depth. This will move it forward as well. But you can just move it backwards after you're done messing with the scale of it. Then there's also line spacing. This doesn't affect the scale of the letters themselves. It just spaces them out a little bit. Squish them together if you really want to. So that about covers the basics of that. You can switch it between the two types here if you want to. And when you're done with that, you can just hide it. Okay, uh, let's get into Imports. Settings, pretty basic. Full screen, disable workbench, disables workbench. It allows you to go underneath the mount without having zooming in issues all the time. Okay, 
So for importing a sleeve, what you want to do is find, uh, you basically need a sleeve without the base on it. You just want the, the camera holder itself. And if you can get that, um, usually you can do this easily in like Tinkercad or something similar, where you just lop the bottom of a sleeve that you like off. And then you can actually import it into the system here and uh, use it with a uh, custom base basically. So I'm gonna dig in and find my, uh, find a <laughs> mount that I can use here. So in this case, I'm just gonna use a pre-built uh, Action 2 mount that I had for this uh, program. Import. All right, that'll take you here. Um, the text doesn't disappear, that's great. I will have to fix that. So let's ignore the text for now. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna have your model centered so that the base of it looks exactly like this does right now. But you wanna have the front of the camera facing where the numbers are. Basically this camera is facing the wrong way. If I imported this, it would be backwards on all the mounts. So you can just use these to mess with it, scale and whatnot. Your positioning, your rotations. In this case, I wanna rotate this 180 degrees. There we are, slap import. Now it should be in the system. I'm gonna get rid of that text for now. You just go down to the bottom of the camera menu, click on import, and there she be. You might have to um, play with one of the angles if you have any clipping. So you saw when I just imported it there, I had a little bit of clipping. That's just because the system hadn't updated yet. But now that I've updated it, should be able to, yep, no clipping or anything like that. You can do whatever you need to with your mount all the same way that you would uh, any of the default mounts. Hopefully this gives the program a little bit more flexibility for those of you that uh, think my mounts don't look great. Rightfully so, they need improvement, but uh, there we are. That should about cover the basics of Mount Maker. If you have anything you'd like to ask, feel free to contact me either by email or on my site or even on Facebook. I try to get back to everybody as fast as I possibly can. And uh, good luck. Thank you for watching.